News. Now I leave you with this particular interview. What happens in the unlikely event a bank collapses? Are you able to obtain payment on your deposit? KTN's Nicole Njoguna had a chat with the Kenya Deposit Insurance Company CEO, Ellen Chepkoni, bringing to light insight on deposit insurance and bank resolution. To you, and today we are talking matters insurance and specifically deposit insurance and bank resolution with the Kenya Deposit Insurance Corporation, who provide a safety net for your deposits in the event, in the unlikely event that a bank fails or collapses, they promptly ensure that you're protected from the loss of your insured deposits. Joining me today is KDIC CEO Mrs. Helen Chapkoni. Thank you very much, and a warm welcome to the show. All right, tell us about KDIC, what is your mandate and what is your contribution to Kenya's socioeconomic growth? KDIC is a state corporation that was established under the KDI Act of 2012 and its main mandate was to provide deposit insurance for the unsophisticated depositors. And so the government saw it fit to set up a state organization that was to protect the depositors in the unlikely event of a bank failure. Mm -hmm. So our main, uh, I can say our main uh, mandate is to provide that deposit insurance, to provide uh, sound risk management uh, frameworks, mm -hmm. because our, uh, our job is to enhance public confidence in Kenya's financial system so that people can be able to bring their money to the banks and lastly to provide what we call prompt resolution so that in the unlikely event of a bank failure we are able to pay promptly to the depositors of that failed bank and also resolve that institution. So from your mandate two things stand out deposit insurance and bank resolution can you break down these two concepts for us? So uh, deposit insurance as I have mentioned is where we kind of just like any other insurance we provide a uh, deposit insurance this is where we levy premiums on the commercial banks and microfinance that are, are regulated by the central bank of kenya they on an annual basis they pay a premium based on the amount of deposits that they are holding in their banks so uh, and with that money we are able to invest and build that fund so that uh, as we grow the fund in case of a bank failure, we are able to use those funds to pay the depositors. So that is the element of the deposit insurance. And with that, it, it helps the, the banking community be confident that it, behind those banks that you bank your money with, there is a KDIC with a good fund that if in case of a bank failure, we are going to pay them. And therefore, it reduces the the jitteriness of the public if in case they hear there's a problem in this bank and this knowing that even if that bank was to have a problem we, they are assured of getting their money so is this a global practice or does it just happen locally uh, deposit insurance actually started in the united states uh, all the way in, nine, in 1934 mm -hmm. i'm not sure of the year but uh, it has been uh, used worldwide as a way of uh, protecting the depositors. Uh, we currently have uh, the International Association of Deposit Insurers, IAD, which is the, the, the body that sets the regulations and, and guides the deposit insurance worldwide. So Kenya is a proud member of that IAD, actually a founder member, and we adhere to those set guidelines as a KDIC. You have been in existence since the Kenya Deposit Insurance Act of 2012 that effectively enhances your mandate. Um, how has the journey been thus far? Tell us about it. The journey has been, uh, it has its own ups and downs. Uh, we were, uh, KDIC, as I mentioned, was set up uh, after the 2012 KDI Act, but before that, it was a, a department of the Central Bank of Kenya. It was set up in 1989. Uh, under the, what they call the Deposit Protection Fund Board. And uh, that was as a result of several bank uh, failures during that uh, time. The 1986-89 financial crisis in Kenya, where several banks failed. So the, the government of Kenya set up uh, that uh, Deposit Protection Fund Board basically to protect those uh, depositors. And since then, it has evolved uh, and managed uh, over 
currently we have 19 financial institutions that are within uh, KDIC that we are managing and they are at various stages of resolution. Yes, and so uh, they started with nine and over time there have been other failures, but over time also we've all been able to wind up some of the institutions. So you mentioned deposit insurance. Why is this important, especially in the Kenyan context, given our savings culture and historical bank failures? Uh, the element of deposit insurance is very critical in the support of the savings, uh, bringing about a savings culture in the country. As I had mentioned earlier, our main uh, public policy objective is to enhance uh, the public confidence in Kenya's financial system. And how do we do that? By providing this deposit insurance. Therefore, when somebody knows that there is a deposit insurer that protects their deposits, they are more comfortable to take their money to the bank, knowing that even if in the unlikely event of that bank failure, they'll be able to get their money. And therefore, uh, the public knowing of the existence of KDIC is very critical because it, it reduces the levels of uncertainties uh, that can sometimes cause uh, runs or bank runs in the, in the banking sector. Because as you are aware, that you can hear sometimes somebody says, oh, you remove your money from this bank. But when you know that these banks are regulated and they are stable, and there is a KDIC behind those institutions, then you will not be keen to withdraw your money, take to another bank. The next day, they are telling you to move again from another bank. Therefore, that brings about uh, financial stability in their country. The current coverage cap is 500,000. Why this amount, and is it up for consideration for review? Currently, the, the cap is at 500,000. It is worth noting that uh, from 1989, when it was set up, until 2021, we were at 100,000. And still, at 100,000, we were covering 96% of all depositors in the country. So when we increased to 500,000, we were able to increase to now what we have at 99%. Now, that amount is determined by the level of the economic activity in the country our GDP levels, and uh, there are so many factors that go into that uh, uh, determination on the amount. So if, you, if already 99% are already covered, that shows you uh, the levels of deposit in the country. And uh, we are open for reviews. Over time, we are uh, expected to do a review. And a review doesn't mean that every review will have to increase the coverage levels. Sometimes when we undertake a review, we find that maybe the economic factors are still the same. We might not even need to review. But we do undertake uh, uh, periodic reviews on the coverage. So as a depositor, how do I know if my bank is protected and do I incur any charges? No depositor incurs any uh, charges. When the banks pay the premiums, they are expected uh, to absorb that as part of their operational costs, and the, the depositor doesn't pay any uh, uh, premium or is not charged any premium. Uh, uh, your other question was, how do I know? How do I know? Yes. We, uh, currently, we have 53 member institutions who, who, who pay uh, the, the premiums to us. And it's expected that all these institutions uh, prom uh, uh, display uh, they are, that they are protected under, by KDIC uh, in their banking halls in a prominent way so that uh, depositors, when they go to their banking halls, they are able to confidently know that uh, this institution is covered under KDIC. So stakeholder management is critical because you're working closely with banks. Uh, what does this interface look like? Our stakeholder engagement has been very good. We've had very good cl collaboration with our member institutions. We have frequent uh, uh, discussions whenever we are making any uh, any changes in our regulations and we have discussions with them. Just recently we had a big uh, uh, stakeholder engagement where we were looking at how we can charge differential, what we call differential premium uh, assessment so that uh, banks ch are charged according to 
their level of risk appetite. So uh, we constantly have those engagements with the, uh, the, our banks and microfinance banks, but also with other financial safety net players, because we know that uh, financial stability in the country does not necessarily have to be only within the banking system. Sometimes risks can emanate from other, other areas, the real, uh, real sector, the capital markets or any other area. So we, we interact uh, uh, alongside other stakeholders, uh, financial sector regulators, to ensure that all of us are speaking in one voice. What is the current state of affairs of financial institutions under the management of KDIC? Currently, uh, our financial sector, I mean our institutions are sound as per the, the, the reports that uh, the central bank uh, uh, gives and even our own. As I told you, we also monitor these institutions and so far our institutions are sound and we do not have any issue. Considering how bank resolution is important to the Kenyan depositor, break this down for us in terms of what is critical and important for you. I will mention that uh, what is critical for me is that uh, public awareness. The public getting to know that there is KDIC. Because we've had instances where uh, institu when a bank failed, People thought their money is gone. They just go and uh, give up, no, no, and they never follow up on, the, on their monies. So what we are trying to do now, and is of critical importance, is to tell the public that there is an institution that actually provides deposit insurance for your deposits. So in the unlikely event of a failure, you should not just give up. Uh, that you, sh you should be able to have uh, to come to KDIC, and you you will be able to be paid to up to the limit of your deposits, but of course uh, until the limit of the protected deposit uh, as it is right now. All right, I'm curious about what are the challenge, what have the challenges been so far and what are the mitigation measures that you're putting in place? Some of the challenges that uh, I can mention right now, uh, of course as I've mentioned, the low public awareness is one of them. The other one is on the litigations, uh, the long nature of our court system. So uh, as I told you that in resolution, most of the times we go after the debtors to recover the money so that we are able to pay the depositor. And sometimes uh, that process uh, takes us through the court systems and some of them can take more than 10 years or 20 or even longer to resolve. And therefore that, is a, that has been a challenge. And the mitigation measures we are undertaking right now includes uh, what we are adopting, what we call the alternative dispute resolution, where we are calling on those debtors, they come, we discuss with them, and we are able to amicably accept, because they also know that they took a loan with this institution, and that money has to be paid. Some people perceive that when a bank fails and you had a loan, you are, you, you are happy, you think you have gotten away with it. But we are saying it is that money that we need so that we are able to pay the depositor. Because at the, at the back of our mind, as at the top of our uh, mandate, is to protect that depositor. And therefore, we have to look for all ways, all the monies that we are able to get so that that depositor gets back their money. So looking at your mandates, what are your achievements thus far and how are you looking to further engagement? Uh, so far, we've been able to grow the fund. Uh, as I said earlier, the fund growth is the one that shows the strength of the institution to be able to withstand if there are any bank failures. So I can say that our achievement is the growth of that fund. We've been able to invest well and be able to grow that fund. The other uh, achievement is that review of coverage from moving from 100,000 100, to 500,000 that has ensured that more depositors are able to get their money. Uh, and uh, and we are, right now we are able to cover uh, uh, many more uh, depositors. Uh, the other one uh, achievement is on the issue of uh, risk-based uh, uh, premium uh, as, uh, assessment. So uh, because of introduction of risk-based premium assessment, we've been able to kind of uh, provide incentives for the banks to be able to undertake their risk management uh, well 
and therefore uh, do their business in a better way uh, because they know that if they, are, if they are not doing it well, they'll be charged higher premiums. So uh, I can mention also that we've been able to pay over 93 billion Kenya shillings to our depositors over and above the protected deposits. Interesting. So what should we expect from KDIC in the immediate and long term considering technological advancements and e-money, especially in terms of creating awareness and furthering your position as Kenya's uh, resolution authority? Uh, KDIC intends to continue on this uh, stakeholder engagement uh, process uh, and public awareness because it is key to us that uh, the public gets to know about us and gets to know what we do. And therefore, that's one of the areas that we'll be focusing on. And our strategic focus in our strategic plan includes the area of deposit insurance where we'll be focusing also on how we will be able to cover the, our depositors better on the area of risk management uh, the early interventions that I've mentioned, we'll be putting in also measures to ensure that we minimize uh, bank failures completely. And therefore, we'll be working closely to ensure that those early interventions are undertaken, therefore uh, not uh, having the banks to come to us for resolution. Uh, our other uh, focus area is on the, the real prompt resolution now. If the, in the likely event of a bank failure. And lastly, on uh, our institutional capacity, we want to build our, institution, our institutions to be able to now undertake those resolution uh, measures that uh, the mandate much more uh, stronger as we go forward. Give us a parting shot, even as we come to an end. My parting shot would be that I would be calling upon our depositors to take advantage of the deposit insurance that is offered by KDIC and continue saving their money uh, with the banks that are regulated by the Central Bank of Kenya. And uh, on, the, on the same matter, we are currently making payments, uh, protected deposits to uh, Imperial Bank uh, that is in liquidation and paying uh, ex, uh, additional uh, deposit, I mean uh, dividends for the BT Bank in liquidation, Daima Bank in liquidation, and the Trade Bank in liquidation. So all the depositors that had their money within those uh, institutions uh, can, can load their claims with the KDIC headquarters and the central bank uh, branches uh, across the country. All right, the message is simple. Kenyans should take advantage of deposit insurance. That has been KDIC CEO, Mrs. Helen Chapkoni. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Nicole Njuguna.